Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here, and today's talk is going to be on autoimmune thyroid conditions. What's happening with autoimmune thyroid conditions? Do you know that majority of thyroid cases, between anywhere between 50 to 90 percent, according to the research, are because of Hashimoto's? Over 20 million Americans have Hashimoto's. I actually have it myself, and I'm just going to kind of lay out the underlying mechanism of what's happening to your thyroid. And why Synthroid, again, is not going to be enough to, to fix the underlying cause of the problem. So again, autoimmunity just means your immune system is attacking you. It's, it's literally affecting and destroying various enzymes and or binding globulins that make your thyroid tissue. And it can actually damage the thyroid tissue. And all of the inflammation that occurs further perpetuates the damage moving forward. And I always tell people, the longer their autoimmunity lasts, the more thyroid tissue they lose. The more thyroid tissue, meaning the less thyroid hormone they'll be able to produce on their own. And they may need thyroid replacement at some point. So let's take a look here. The autoimmune process, it begins essentially in the sodium iodine symporter system. This is where our body brings iodine into our thyroid gland and converts it to iodide. And again, this process of taking iodide and binding it to tyrosine is called organification. So we have tyrosine, which is our T. and we bind it to four molecules of iodine, which is our T4. So T4 is our active thyroid hormone. This is how it's made in our body. And again, as the bi I had a couple of other videos in the past on iodine, the iodide controversy and why iodine can actually cause inflammation, but if we don't have enough selenium, during this process our body actually spits out H2O2. And that's called hydrogen peroxide, and it's very, very inflammatory. Without enough selenium, we're not going to be able to um, squelch the underlying inflammation from the hydrogen peroxide. So selenium is really important. So a lot of people that are dosing up iodine are selenium deficient. So you want to focus on selenium first, iodine down the road when the inflammation is cooled down, essentially. So again, what's happening here? This is T4. This is our tyrosine attached to four iodine molecules. That makes T4. T4 comes out and converts peripherally. T3, again, it converts T4 to T3 peripherally outside of the thyroid tissue. And T3 has effects in the liver, in the GI, the brain, and cholesterol metabolism. If we don't have enough thyroid hormone, we can't break down cholesterol into our hormone constituents because all hormones come from cholesterol. So you can see how important T3 is in thyroid hormone because without enough of it, we're not going to be able to break down our building blocks that eventually make our hormones. We really want to make sure that we have our active thyroid hormone. And again, what happens is our thyroid literally, T3, has to bind into a receptor site for it to have a metabolic effect. That's how a hormone works. Here's our receptor site. Here's our hormone. Now, if we're systemically inflamed and we have all these antibodies being produced, what actually happens is this. We have all these various antibodies over here. Let's draw a couple of antibodies. To name a few, we have TPO. And we have thyrobinding globulin. And that's an antibody. And these things can literally create damage over to the thyroid tissue. So they're creating inflammation there. They're creating inflammation over here at the sodium iodine symporter system. And they, off, they actually come in here like this. And they bind in. And they can affect T3 over here from coming in and binding into the receptor site. And for a hormone to have a metabolic response, it actually has to bind to this re receptor site here. So if we have antibodies affecting and damaging our thyroid tissue, we have antibodies over here affecting our sodium um, iodine symporter system, and then we have it over here blocking the receptor sites, you can see all of the various damage that's going on. And if I come in here and I just say, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost your synthroid. I'm going to give you a little bit of synthroid. See if I can get a pen that works here. I come over here and give you a little bit of Synthroid. Is that really going to be enough? Especially when we know that how important selenium is, and most people that have autoimmunity have selenium issues, so they have decreased selenium. 
And then what if they also have adrenal fatigue? And what if they have an anemia? And what if they have hypochlorhydria and low protein? So you can see the list goes on and on and on. And other nutrients such as zinc as well. So you can see just by giving a little bit of Synthroid over here doesn't fix all the damage that's happening at the sodium iodine symporter system. It doesn't affect the receptor sites and also doesn't affect the damage that's happening to the thyroid tissue over in here. So I hope this gives you a good idea of what's happening when we have an autoimmune attack and why just giving Synthroid isn't enough. So again, first thing first, you have to get diagnosed before we can do anything. So one of the first things you can do is get a good TPO antibody or thyroglobin globulin antibody test. That way you know you got it. And then from there, there are certain infections that can make this go worse. And there are also certain nutrients like iodine early on. Iodine can be like gasoline on the fire, especially if you're selenium deficient. And then also other things such as gluten. So when we're dealing with autoimmune thyroid conditions, especially Hashimoto's, it can be a little bit more complex. And Hashi's in the beginning can feel more like a, a hyper type of attack because we're spilling out all these thyroid hormones because our TPO and TAG are coming in there and stabbing it. So that hormone output in the beginning can feel like a hyper attack, but in the long run, it can drop. So just kind of putting it out there, you may feel hyper in the beginning and then eventually go hypo. And about 40% of Hashimoto's or autoimmune thyroid conditions are false um, negatives. You get a negative on the test, but it may still be positive. So again, recapping everything here one more time, when we have an autoimmune thyroid attack, we're affecting the sodium iodine symporter system. That affects how iodine is brought into the thyroid. Okay. Again, if we're making iodine and there's already inflammation happening and we're spitting out hydrogen peroxide, that can create more inflammation. Again, the antibodies can affect the receptor site. They can affect the hormone T3 from binding into the receptor site. And again, if we're having this, we probably have a lot of other issues such as the adrenal fatigue, the selenium issues, the protein, the low stomach acid, the nutrient deficiency, the low zinc, and maybe even some chronic infections too. So again, if you have an autoimmune thyroid and you're not getting the results you're looking at, feel free and click below my link where you can schedule a complimentary evaluation so you can find out what the next steps you need to take are to get your thyroid back to, back to health. Again, this is Dr. Justin signing off. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks. Have a great day.